Fast forward a few hands here. I play a small few ones just before this. They don't go my way. But in this hand, I'm hoping we play a big one. Our buddy Skull Mike on my direct right, he comes in for the $500 raise over the $200 straddle. And we look down at the beautiful, the best hand ever created pocket aces in the cutoff and make it $1,500 to go. Back over to Skull Mike and he gives me the inquiry that you always want to hear when you put in that three bet with the aces. He asks how much I'm playing, how much I bought in for. I let him know $25,000 before he puts in the four bet up to $5,500. Of course, we are loving it. Trying to play it cool here, I ask him how much he has in his stack. He's got a pretty similar stack size to me. We could put in the five bet, but that feels super strong here. I'm not exactly targeting Skull Mike in this game. I just put in the flat call, keep his whole range in there, and we go heads up to a flop. That comes down pretty favorable for aces. Ace, queen, eight with two diamonds. Skull Mike now slows it down here. And I do say that it's favorable for the aces, but on the other hand, it definitely could kill a lot of action versus all other hands. At least hands that don't make sets. Pocket kings, they're not gonna love this flop. Of course, queens will. Pocket jacks, they won't. Pocket tens, they won't. Even ace king loses to ace queen and pocket queens. So after Mike checks it over to me, I'm not exactly afraid of any card here in this situation, so I decide to slow play and I check it back. Turn basically changes nothing. We still got the nuts here. Hoping Mike pumps some money into this pot, but he does not oblige. Checks it over to me again, and we are gonna have to start putting some money into this pot. Can't slow play forever. Got to try and build a pot here at some point. Now seems like the time, so I bet $3,500. Skull thinks about it for a little bit. We'd be happy to see any option other than fold, and thankfully, he does not fold. He goes for the flat call. Pot is building $18,000 in the middle, and the river card is for sure an interesting one. The king of hearts, which definitely improves some hands. It improves ace king, it improves pocket kings. Jack 10 does get there, but I'm not worried about a single hand with top set in a four bet pot. Nothing happening too quickly in this hand. I was the last aggressor on the last street. Mike thinking over his options, weighing all those options, and eventually he decides to jam his remaining $17,000 into the middle. We've got ourselves an automatic call. We get shown a monster hand. Pocket Kings that rivers a set, but we've got ourselves top set on the flop. It is a massive cooler and you can see on my face that I feel a little bit bad about this one, to be honest. Versus any other play on the table, I think we'd get a little bit of celebration out of me, but I'm gonna stay subdued here, trying to play it cool here in front of Skull Mike. But what a massive cooler. Aces versus Kings, set over set in a $50,100, $25,000 a person, and we've got ourselves an over 50 k pot. My goodness, what a cold deck. Mimi strolls in, <laughs> strolling on in. Moving along, hand number 101 on this live stream. Mike D in the hijack, sizable raise, $800. Action folds around to me in the small blind. We've got ourselves Ace King suited in hearts, the second best suit ever created. These are not exactly comfortable bet sizes. An $800 raise preflop, that's going to push my three bet size up to $3,100. Mike D puts some money in there preflop. He doesn't want to put his cards in the muck. He's making the call. We're off to see a flop heads up, and we see the Ace of Diamonds on the flop, which is a very welcome sight. Gonna down bet here, super dry flop, Ace 9 4 rainbow, put out a C bet of $1,600. $600. Kind of funny to say I'm sizing down and then to say I'm betting $1,600, but that is the bet size. Mike D wastes no time putting the pressure on, puts in a raise, raises up to $5,000. Going to be a little bit of concern here. Maybe he flopped two pair, maybe he flopped a set of nines. It's not going to matter. If that is the case, all these chips are eventually going to go into the middle. But if he's got himself some sort of a bluff, if he perceives my down bet on the flop as weakness, then I'm going to flat call and allow him to continue to bluff in that kind of an instance. I make the call and we are off to a turn card, which is the Jack of Clubs. Again, not exactly the most comfortable turn card and it doesn't get a whole lot more comfortable when he bets $10,000 on the turn. Thinking over my options here and, and I'm not exactly sure what to do, I do know that I'm not folding. In my mind, it's just a decision between jamming now that there's a flush draw out there and not giving a cheap price should there be a flush draw in Mike's hand or just flat calling and allowing him to continue to barrel. If he happens to have any bluffs in his range, 
range. We're just gonna fold those out with a raise. So that's the path that I stick to. I'm not exactly sure looking back that that is the right path considering how big this pot has grown to and considering how little is left in Mike D's stack. But that's my thinking at the time. Toss in the $10,000, we're off to a river card. I'm never folding no matter what the river card is. It's a deuce of diamonds. It's about as inconsequential as it gets. I check and now Mike D slows it down with a check back, which is a very good sign. We roll it over and of course, the ace king is good. Top pair, top kicker. $18,500 profit in this hand. Things going well, to say the least. Currently up $42,700 according to this beautiful graphic. I kind of want to frame it. kind of want to hang it on the wall. That's how good things are going. Sometimes poker can be very difficult. Sometimes you make a lot of second best hands. In this instance, not the case so far. Things have officially gone off the rails as exemplified in this hand. What a hand this is. Robbie is very first to act in this hand and she decides she is going to wager everything, all the chips, all the money, all $23,275 is just getting sent into the middle. Skull Mike is out of there and we are two to Robbie's left looking down at Ace King off suit and what on earth is going on here? An open jam for $23,000. And here we are sitting looking at Ace King off suit. What goes into your mind when you see an open jam for $23,000 and you look down at Ace King off suit? With plenty of players to act behind you, mind you. For me, I start thinking about hands such as Ace Queen suited, pocket nines, all sorts of different holdings that we are either flipping or we are ahead against. Granted, do we want to just stick a bunch of money in there against that kind of range? And when I say a bunch of money, once again, $23,000. But even though Robbie is not from Texas, it is clear that she has very much embraced the Texas ways. And I didn't come all the way from Las Vegas to fold Ace King off suit to a $23,000 all in open jam. Now, did I? I'm in there. I'm making the call. I have no idea what's going on, but I'm sticking the money in. Thankfully, nobody wakes up with any monsters behind us. And Robbie asks if I want to run it twice. I say sure. And then she rolls over her holding, which is the hand. It's the Robbie down to the suits, the jack of clubs and the four of hearts, the exact suits, the famous hand that shook the poker world. She's in there doing it for the memes. I don't think she was looking for a call, but she got one. Now we're gonna have to see five cards twice for about $50,000. Jack of spades. Drop it, you to drop it up. It. Here comes the chop. Chop yeah. it up. It's coming chop right now. Yeah. Jack, Jack, Jack. I did it for the gram. I did it. I believe it. I believe it. Just give her a four. Just give her a four. Anything. A four, Jack. Wow! The Jack on the river chopped that up. Guys, Jack a river. Chop it up. You know. There's been a lot of surreal moments that we've gotten to experience in this poker vlog journey. Well, you can chalk that one up to another bizarre and surreal moment along the way. All right, everyone's favorite game is back on the Nick game in this hand. Skull Mike makes it $500 to go over that $200 straddle out of the hijack over to us in the cutoff looking down at Jack 10 of clubs. Could do one of two things here, could flat call. I think I like to take the more aggressive route, especially with the knit game on in this instance. I'm gonna make it $1,500 to go, put in the three bet out of the cutoff. Jungle folds, Josh folds. Over to Avi in the big blind. He has two cards that he doesn't wanna let go just yet. Makes the cold call out of that big blind. Ebony next to act. She decides she also wants to get in the mix here. She's trying to win a hand in the knit game. She puts in a second cold call. Back over to Skull Mike here, weighs his options for a little while, but eventually decides he wants to get in the mix as well, trying to win a hand. So he makes the call and we are going four ways to a flop. A7, eight, two diamonds, one heart, that's zero clubs. Action checks over to me. We could go ahead and try and represent a hand like ace king, ace queen, ace jack, or we could just take a free card try and hit our gut shot straight draw. Might be a little tough to get folds versus three opponents, so that's what I do. I decide to check it back, take a free card. We find as beautiful of a turn card as we could have possibly asked for. Offsuit nine, giving us the absolute 
nuts. Jack high straight. And what's even better is that Avi leads right out for $5,000 into us living the absolute dream here. Ebony gets out of the way here and it's over to Skull Mike. He's thinking about it, checks his cards a couple of times, but eventually he decides to get out of the way. Now we've got ourselves a decision. Do we flat call here and take it to the river or do we feel like Avi is committed to this pot? He doesn't have too much money behind here. He's got about $15,000 behind. And when he leads out from the big blind into three opponents, feels like he probably has something that he's pretty happy with. Two pairs, sets, worse straights, combo draws, all those things are going to feel pretty incentivized and pretty encouraged to continue on this board, especially when stacks are not super deep. So after feigning a little bit of weakness, feigning some thought, I already know what I'm doing. I'm sticking the money in here, raise it up, put a bunch of pink chips in there, and Avi snap calls, snap sends his chips into the middle, and it is as good of a situation as we could possibly ask for. Avi, unfortunately for him, has turned the bottom end of the straight. It is an absolute sick turn card here, giving us the nuts and giving Avi a worse straight. It also means that he's drawing completely dead. There's no card that can come where he wins or chops. Doesn't matter if we run it once, twice, run the rest of the deck out. Avi, unfortunately for him, is drawing dead. We've got ourselves another cooler situation. And if there was ever a time to run absolutely super pure, it's in this 50, 100, usually 200, sometimes 400, massive poker game. Almost everything clicked in this session. And there's been some other streams from this location where things have not exactly worked out for us, one outers and such, but I feel like this stream made up for that and then some considering the stakes of this game and to say that it feels awesome to run good in this kind of a game at least a little bit of an understatement Six.